what better way to start than mm. uh, with Ban Ki-moon? Okay, mm. fine, there might be just sort of one person <laughs> higher than that, but that's about uh, it. Uh, uh, the former UN Secretary mm -hmm. General, uh, mm. and uh, we all know that today he is with the elders, he's still engaged, and uh, maybe again talking about context, uh, it was under his auspicious uh, that the UN decided to leave the MDGs eight goals uh, for humanity uh, that we've decided, and I include mm -hmm. all of yes. us, uh, that we've decided in 2015 that we need the SDGs, 17 different goals, and was again in 2015, and this year could be something that equals it, in 2015 that the climate agreement was achieved, and we all said, okay, two degrees, not more. Right at the moment, the world is on a trajectory of 2.9. So, of course, this is not enough. We have to do something. And, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to listen to Ban Ki-moon. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, my warmest the greetings to all gathered for this F20 Climate Solutions Forum. I'm honored to be addressing this forum at an important moment in a critical year and at the start of what will be a defining decade for humanity. There are only two weeks before the first part of the Biodiversity COP15 begins in Kunming, only four weeks until G20 leaders meet in Rome, and three months until the world comes together for COP26 in Glasgow. The decisions leaders will make this year and in the next few years will determine what kind of future we will can best hold on generations to come. The past 12 months have marked an inflection point for climate action. The pandemic has exposed the systemic failures that can lead to ecological and health crises and can deepen existing inequalities. We have also witnessed the growing recognition of the absolute urgency of the climate crisis. However, as yet, global efforts to address the climate crisis fall far short of what is needed. Leaders have before them a remarkable but narrowing window of opportunity. The leadership of the G20 is crucial in securing a safer future. The G20 represents 90% of global GDP, 80% of world trade, and 80% of emissions. What happens at the G20 at the end of October is arguably the most important influencing factor for COP26. I see five potential pillars to support success that I urge G20 leaders to act on. First, some G20 countries have already submitted stronger NDCs, nationally determined contributions. Those G20 countries still lagging behind must follow suit in the run-up to Glasgow. Secondly, it is essential that G7 and other rich countries, including the United States, Italy, and Australia, demonstrate well before Glasgow that they promised $100 billion of finance for poorer developing countries will materialize with a much higher share for adaptation. We need to close the growing chasm between accelerating needs and broken promises. Thirdly, we must end the use of coal. A positive outcome would be a no-coal compact between governments, bolstered by a just transition for workers so no one is left behind. Fourthly, I stand behind business calling for the G20 to remove fossil fuel subsidies, ideally by 2025, and for a meaningful price on carbon. I also hope 
the G20 will ag agree to adopt mandatory climate risk disclosure so that investors can reward those that are part of the solution. Finally, we must protect our forests, oceans, and other ecosystems. Any effort to stay on a 1.5 Celsius degrees pathway means developing more sustainable systems of agriculture and land use. G20 nations have understandably found themselves embroiled in tackling the pandemic at home. However, as we have learned with the pandemic, global crises require global solutions. Through global coordinated and concerted action, the G20 leaders must now not only deliver on their promises, but lead boldly by example with the new commitments in line with 1.5 Celsius degrees. Heads of state have an exceptional opportunity and obligation to do what is needed so the world can avert climate disaster, and it is imperative that the G20 countries pull in the same direction on these critical efforts. Thank you. Well, we thank so much Ban Ki-moon. It's an honor having his message to open our F20 Climate Solutions Forum. A lot of encouragement there, and I yeah. think uh, seeing that the G20 and therefore also yeah. Foundations 20 in that same vein uh, constitute 80% of global wealth and global power, we should actually use it to the yeah, right uh, way. Connie. And part of that is, of course, talking about power, mm -hmm. energy.